Welcome to Third Data Tech Bytes. I'm Yoko Terry, a product marketing manager for Third Data Vantage. In this recording, I and my colleague Betsy Hangington will be going over the analytic functions available in Third Data Vantage new SQL engine. Before I go into the new analytic functions, let me go over a little bit about analytics, specifically advanced analytics. According to Gartner, advanced analytics is the autonomous or semi-autonomous examination of data or concept using sophisticated techniques and tools beyond those of traditional business intelligence to discover deeper insights, make predictions, or generate recommendations. Techniques used in advanced analytics include machine learning, data mining, predictive analytics, location analytics, Big Data Analytics, and Advanced Visualization. Technopedia states that advanced analytics is a broad range of analytics that are intended to give business greater insight into their data than they could ordinary. In general, advanced analytics consists of three phases of analytics. Descriptive analytics, which basically is a summary of historical data, Predictive analytics, which predicts future outcomes and trends based on patterns in existing data. And finally, prescriptive analytics, which is meant to find the best course of action for a given situation. As it provides much more insights and actionable course of actions that lead to business outcomes, more and more businesses are moving toward adapting advanced analytics. Teradata Database, which has been long known as an industry-leading database with effortless scalability, mission-critical availability, superior query performance, sophisticated user and workload management, has evolved to become Teradata Vantage. And compute capabilities existed in Teradata Database, such as a variety of in-database functions like SQL-based analytics, matrix functions, along with new advanced analytic capabilities like 4D analytics and new set of native advanced analytic functions form the core of Vantage as new SQL engine. In this tech bytes, we will walk through each of the new analytic functions. Here is a quick list of 10 new analytic functions available in Vantage new SQL engine. Next. Betsy Huntington will go over each of the 10 analytic functions at high level. Thanks, Yoko. Hello, I'm Betsy Huntington, and I'll be covering the first round of the new analytic functions that are available now. NPath is one of the first advanced analytic functions built and patented by Teradata. It is a powerful behavioral analytic technique that determines all paths that lead to a specific event or occurrence over a certain time period. For example, a telco business would want to understand how customers stop using their services. In this instance, they can collect all customer transactional data over time across all channels, for example, the call center, the physical store, and online, and see how the customer interacted through these channels before they decided to leave. NPath is a technique that enables this path analysis. Sessionization is a data preparation function that is usually invoked prior to NPath. In web analytics parlance, a session is the term used to refer to a user's time browsing a website. Sessionization is a function that simply knits together all sessions with each session being defined as one where continuous activity is registered. When the customer ceases to be active for a certain time window, for example 30 minutes, the session is closed and a new session is registered when, the, when she re-engages. Sessionization can be used in path analysis cases that include online data, fraud detection, customer churn, and so on. Attribution is a way to determine the causal impact of a specific activity on a final outcome. For example, let's say a customer first sees an ad in a newspaper that spurs her to go online and do some research on the company that sells the product. She then goes to the store to check out the product and later decides to call the call center of the company to ask a few questions. After all this, she purchases the product. When companies look at the sequence of activities, they want to understand which action contributed the most to her purchase decision. Was it the first newspaper ad that swayed her, or was it the call center conversation, or something else in between, or was it all of the activities? Attribution is a function that parses these activities and assigns a value to each activity category based on which 
the company can make future investment decisions. For example, if it turns out the newspaper ad has the highest contributing factor, they would decide to put more money into print media. The time series aggregate function is a specialized form of the aggregate function, providing an easy way of consolidating data in buckets of time. Aggregation method ranges from commonly used ones such as average, count, sum, minimum and maximum, to more complex ones such as standard deviation or variance. For example, you may have a series of sensors that generate readings at varying time intervals. Some sensors may create a reading every 30 seconds, some every few minutes, others every hour. Using the time series aggregate function, you can easily calculate average and maximum temperatures of each sensor in 30 minute increments for data that covers a specific day. Time series aggregate has a wide range of use cases as it can be used for any data associated with a time code. You can easily find data trends and exceptions based on specific time bucketing. Sample use cases would be for real-time shelf management using real-time sales transactions or for predictive maintenance using sensor readings. A single tree is a classification function that is used to categorize data into specific buckets. For example, you could categorize adults over the age of 18 as student, employed, unemployed, or retired. But classification is not easy and data needs to be analyzed first with existing known classifications to understand how they are classified. This results in a model, and one of these models is single tree. The implementation of the single tree model on brand new as of yet unclassified data happens through the single tree predict. Single tree predict classifies data into specific buckets by applying the single tree model. Hence they are called scoring algorithms as they score new data by creating categories. And by the way, these categories can be numeric, alphabetical, or they could be labeled as in cat, dog, animal, thing, etc. Some use cases of single tree predict include determining if a new bank transaction is fraudulent based on known attributes of other fraudulent transactions, or what to offer a customer who has been bumped from a flight based on her flying history. Like single tree predict, forest predict applies a model that has already been created on the brand new data to create data categories. In this case, the forest predict implements the random forest model. Random forest models are models that agglomerate many single trees and usually result in improved speed and predictive accuracy. In other words, the outcomes of multiple single trees are considered and the outcome with the greatest frequency among all the single trees becomes the preferred choice. The forest predict function simply applies this random forest model on new data to obtain data classifications. The use cases are similar to the ones for single tree determining fraudulent versus legitimate transactions, identifying diseases based on diagnostic data, and making investment decisions from market characteristics. Support Vector Machines, or SVM, is a machine learning function. They are also called supervised learning functions because they are implemented on data that are already labeled when the model is created. SVMs use existing classifications, also called training data, to build a model that assigns new categories to brand new data. Again, as before, this is another type of clustering or classification function. Each of these functions has different strengths. The sparse SVM predict applies the SVM to create categories on new data. Use cases for SVM predict include image classification and handwriting recognition. In statistics, a linear model is used to predict the value of a variable based on the value of other variables on which it depends. For example, let's assume the price of a new car will depend on A, the average local income, and B, the price of local housing. This is a linear relationship. As income levels go up, so does the price of a new car. The price of the new car is a dependent variable, and the income and local house price are the independent variables. Now, in this case, we are predicting the value of something that is measured in the same way that the independent variable is measured, dollars. But what happens if we are measuring the likelihood of a car purchase? In this case, we're looking not to predict a dollar value, but a probability. Given that the dependent and independent variables have different measurements, but are still linearly related, we need something that intelligently understands the nature of the variables and applies the right kind of statistics to predict likelihood instead of dollar price. This model is the generalized version of the linear model and is called the Generalized Linear Model, or GLM. The GLM predict function simply takes the GLM model and scores all data using that model, much like the other predict functions above. Use cases for GLM predict can include predicting the incidence rate of disease in certain areas as the population changes, or predicting the rates of manufacturing flaws as a product matures. 
A naive Bayes classifier is a probability function that is used to classify data into distinct buckets. But unlike other classifiers, naive Bayes assumes when doing the classifications that the features that make up something, for instance the objects, are independent. For example, a banana is yellow, long, and sweet, and it's a fruit. As humans, we know that when these four data points are given to us, we connect them and we say banana. But a naive Bayes classifier assumes that these are not related features and proceeds to treat them as independent events. It then classifies the data by looking at a vast amount of these features occurring over time and provides a probabilistic classifier for these four features. The naive Bayes predict function simply applies the naive Bayes model on new data. Use cases for naive Bayes predict include customer churn, retention, renewals, and upgrades, also identifying viewers' tastes when specific ad campaigns are created. This function is a slight variation on the naive Bayes classifier in that it is applied only on text data to determine categories, for example, medical diagnosis categories or document classifications. The naive Bayes text classifier predict function simply applies the naive Bayes text classifier model on new data. Use cases specific to the naive Bayes text classifier predict function include judging documents as being legitimate or spam, or classifying documents into topics like science, law, politics, or chemistry based on certain keywords. Thank you, Betsy. Teradata Vantage combines in a single platform descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics, autonomous decisioning, machine learning functions, and visualization tools, so you can analyze anything, deploying anywhere, and deliver analytics that matter. Vantage offers choice and flexibility deployed across public clouds as well as on-premises on optimized or commodity infrastructure or as a service. With Vantage, you can get actionable answers faster while operationalizing analytics on an enterprise-ready platform to drive crucial business outcomes. Thank you for watching this episode of TechBytes. For more information about Teradata Vantage, please visit our website at www.teradata.com. Have a good day.